This is episode six of Discovering Classical Music, Benjamin Britten's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. This is just a quick episode before I go out touring for the rest of the month. When the summer comes, I should be able to put out more regular content for a few months, and I'll be taking requests. If you want to be a part of that, then please visit patreon.com forward slash inside the score. So this piece by the English composer Benjamin Britten was composed for a British educational documentary called Instruments of the Orchestra. And so it provides an amazingly idiomatic guide to each set of instruments in the orchestra, what kind of music the different instruments are good at playing, and how they fit together to make colourful or explosive orchestral textures. But it's far from being just a textbook of musical examples it does come together to make a thrilling piece of music in its own right. The piece has a subtitle, Variations and Fugue on a Theme of Purcell. That's because the main theme that Britain uses is actually taken from the rondo of Purcell's Abdelazar Suite, which is another English piece written in 1695. Here's the Purcell. And here's the Briton. So, in a traditional variation form, you'll hear the theme in full, and then each variation will maintain the underlying structure of the theme. The foundation will stay the same, the harmonic and tonal flag points will stay where they are, but On the more surface levels, the composer will change things up, add trills, frills, surprises, and that kind of thing. However, this piece is more modern, and so Britain's variations are more just variations and ideas, inspired and directed by the main theme. And some of these variations are far easier to connect to the main theme than others. For example, here's a snippet of the main theme. Then here's a bit from the flutes. And oboes. So you see that he's playing with the same melodic ideas, but taking them in a different direction but other variations are not so clearly connected to the main theme. Take the horns, for example. Britain ends the piece with an extraordinarily thrilling fugue. I've talked about fugues and variation forms in my YouTube series, How to Listen to Classical Music, which is on my channel Inside the Score. So the best way to listen to this piece, perhaps, is to enjoy how he introduces and uses each instrument in turn, and how he crafts textures, colours and melodies which are totally idiomatic to those instruments, that is, which totally suit the character of the instrument. It's almost a masterclass in orchestral writing. So let's go ahead and listen. Before we can start with our variations, first we need our theme. Britain starts this in full tutti, that is, complete orchestra. He then moves on to introduce each group of instruments in turn. First we get the woodwinds. Then the brass. Then the strings, playing first thickly, then with pizzicato or plucked accompaniment, and then in a moment of fun creativity we get the percussion. And finally, to wrap up the main theme, we get a big tutti again. Now 
now onto the variations. Variation A is for piccolo and flute, the highest of the woodwind instruments, dancing and fluttering playfully, accompanied very lightly by tremolo strings and harp, and sometimes triangle. Then we get variation B for oboes, the next woodwind down on the list. It's a completely different character, long, languid melody, and Britain makes the harmonies luscious and post-romantic, reflecting the oboe's amazing capacity for carrying melody. Variation C is for clarinets, and another colour change. They play in quick, cheeky arpeggios, accompanied by plucked strings and a staccato tuba. It's a lot of fun. Then variation D is for bassoons, the bass instrument of the woodwind section. This starts more edgily with a march-like bouncing figure in the bassoons. But then Britain shows off how the bassoons are suited for melody as well as rhythm. So that's the woodwinds. And now it's time for... Variation E, violins, and they immediately take off into the sky and soar in this brilliant polka-esque music. This is followed by Variation F for violas, a much more mellow, thoughtful response, exploring the range and colour of the instrument. Don't neglect the violas. Then we get variation G, cellos, and Britain's note in the score says, cellos sing with a splendid richness and warmth. Then comes variation H for double basses. This one is very playful. The basses are responding to these teases from the winds and tambourine. But then we get this fabulous little melody. The basses are so rarely given the opportunity to sing, but here they are. And then the basses do what they started with, but in reverse, going down rather than up. Next up is variation I for harp, which is technically a stringed instrument too. This has a colour change and new mysterious textures, with gong, cymbals and shimmering strings. And this makes a most beautiful colour for a harp solo. It's a wonderful variation. So that's it for strings. Now onto brass, starting with horns, four of them. And later they return back down. Then Variation K is for trumpets, playing their march-like, fanfarish, militaristic patterns which they're so good at, with snare drum and plodding strings accompanying. Next is Variation L for trombones and bass tuba, typically the bassier instruments of the brass. This is a grander, nobler kind of pompous promenade. But 
But in the middle of it, we get an awesome progression. And that's it for brass. And finally, we have variation M for percussion, accompanied by a fun string texture. The leader of the percussion here is the timpani, the tuned drums. But we get interludes from other percussion with beautiful orchestral couplings. He just knows how to write well for orchestra. Bass drum and cymbals. Then tambourine and triangle. Then a snare drum and tempo blocks. Then xylophone. Then castanets and gong. Kind of funny, I know. Then we have a whip. No, not that kind of whip. An orchestral whip. Then finally, they're all thrown together into one big percussive cake. And this all ends with a rising scale in the plucked strings, while each percussion instrument mimics this to comic effect. And the xylophone plays us out. Now, finally, we get our incredible fugue. I've made a video on fugues, but what it is is basically we're given a melody and then each voice or each instrument in turn imitates that melody following certain rules. The overlapping textures become increasingly more complex and the sum effect of that can be pretty powerful and effective, as you're about to see. So here is our fugue subject, our fugue melody, introduced to us by the piccolo, the highest woodwind in the orchestra. It's pretty long and complex, right? How is he going to manage each instrument in the orchestra taking this on? Luckily for us, he's a genius. I highly, highly recommend that you listen to this fugue in its entirety. It's an immensely complex bit of writing, and yet it's so simple to follow, because all he's really doing is introducing the subject one instrument at a time. He's introducing the instruments in exactly the same order that the variations came in. It's that simple. First piccolo, as we heard, then flutes, oboes, clarinets, bassoons, that's all the wind in turn. And then it comes in violins, then violas, cellos, basses, the strings, then the harp joins in too. And then it becomes all the more thrilling when the brass joins in. First horns, then trumpets, then trombones and tuba. And yes, you better believe that there are trombone slides. And finally, percussion joins the mix too. So he's made this incredibly complex fugal texture, which might normally be difficult to approach for a newcomer, but he's made it extremely easy to follow by introducing each voice in each section one at a time. But the best is yet to come. Yes, our main theme comes back, surrounded by this incredible halo of orchestral colours and textures based on the fugue theme, and it leads to this huge climax, both emotional and overjoyed. <laughs> Anyway, do
do go and listen to it. It's only 16 minutes or so, and it's a fantastic piece. For recordings, I'd actually recommend Simon Rattle conducting the Birmingham Symphony Orchestra for this modern, exciting sound. However, if you want something a bit more fun, which is still exciting, something that reflects the playfulness with which this piece was originally intended, then try out Benjamin Britten's own recording of him conducting the London Symphony Orchestra. It's a different sound, and it's great to have that choice. If you think that there was something of value in this podcast and you'd like to buy me a coffee, then please visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash inside the score. For the price of a coffee, you'll really help to support this channel and allow it to continue my mission of spreading classical music. So I'm off on a tour for a month now. I'll be back in June. Thank you for listening and see you in the summer.